Hi, my name is Abigail, and today I'm going to be showing you how to track tasks in Huli. If this is your first time using the Huli platform, you can check out my last video on setting up your workspace, linked in the corner of this video and in the description below. Now let's get started. Here I have created a workspace with three team members. This small team is working together to build a fitness tracking app. Right now we're viewing the workspace as Elizabeth, the project lead. Elizabeth has already created three projects to organize her team's responsibilities. Accessibility, feature development, and user experience. Because the team is small and there is some overlap between their roles, Elizabeth has made everyone on the team a member of every project. Every project also has a default assignee for issues. Here, Terry is the default assignee for accessibility. There are already some issues or tasks within each project. Each issue has a priority, unique identifier, title, tags, time estimate, date, and assignee. For a snapshot of any issue, hover over the issue on the list and press space. Here you can see a preview of the issue details. You can also scroll through issues using the arrow keys here. Click on an issue to open the full view. Here you can see the entire activity history for the issue. You can also see more settings here. Now let's see how Elizabeth can create a new issue for her team. A new issue can be created by clicking the new issue button or by pressing C on the keyboard. Here Elizabeth has the option to change the project that this issue will be attached to. She can also choose a template if one is available, but this will be covered in a later video. Elizabeth can add a title and description for her issue. Markdown formatting is available for issue descriptions. Other members can also collaborate on creating an issue description together. Elizabeth is going to set the issue status to to-do. This is a high priority item. And she's going to add labels for development and feature. She's not sure how long this is going to take, so she's going to leave the time estimation blank. For a due date, she'll select this coming Friday, but this can be changed if needed. From here, Elizabeth can add sub-issues to break down the task further. Although this task is a new feature, it also involves a design component, so Elizabeth is going to change the signee to Jacob. She's also going to set the status to to-do to create an action item for Jacob. She'll set the priority to high and add labels for UX and design. She'd like Jacob to complete this by tomorrow so the rest of the team can get started on the rest of the feature. Next, she'll add a sub issue for Terry to review designs for accessibility best practices. Although this is part of the feature development, she's also going to change the project to accessibility. She'll set the status to to-do, high priority, and change the assignee to Terry. This will be labeled as accessibility and also user experience. For a due date, she'll pick Wednesday. Finally, Elizabeth will need to implement the animation in the code, so she'll assign a final sub-issue to herself. Once Elizabeth has created the parent issue and three sub-issues, each team member will receive a notification in their inbox that they have been assigned an action item connected to that issue. Here, Elizabeth has received a notification for the parent issue and the specific sub-issue that she's assigned herself. In her planner, Elizabeth can see that she has been assigned two action items related to these issues. Clicking on the action item allows her to add her own personal notes and description for completing this task. She can also click on the issue tag here to see the details of the issue itself. This personal action item allows Elizabeth to add notes that are private to her and also schedule the action item on her personal planner. 
When she moves the action item onto her planner by dragging and dropping or by manually adding a work slot, the status of the issue will be updated from to do to in progress. Here you can see that the status has been changed to in progress automatically because Elizabeth scheduled the action item on her calendar. Let's say some time has passed. Elizabeth has received a couple notifications in her inbox. Let's go check them out. Here, Elizabeth can see that Terry has set the status to in progress for this sub issue. This means that Terry has added her action item to her own personal planner, indicating that she's committed to starting the work. Elizabeth can also see that Jacob has set the status of his sub issue to done. This means that Jacob has completed the work for this action item. He's also submitted a time report, indicating that he spent two hours on this task. Back in the tracker, Elizabeth can now see that two of the sub-issues are in progress and one is done. There are lots of ways Elizabeth can customize her tracker to better reflect the kinds of tasks and issues that her team is dealing with. These will be covered in more detail in a later video, but I'd just like to point out a few options for customization. There are lots of details that can be edited right away with each project. For example, setting a default issue status to to-do, making a project private, and allowing new members to automatically join this project space. For even more options for customization, check out space types in your project settings. Classic project is the default project type that's used across the Huli platform. However, this project can be customized to better suit the needs of your team and the kinds of issues and tasks that you'll be working with. You can also create your own space type for whatever kind of projects you need. There are too many settings here to cover them all in this video, but let me point out one that can be very useful for customizing your projects. Here you'll see different kinds of task types. For example, issues are the main tasks that are used in the classic project space type. Here you can see the process states used for the classic project. You may wish to have different kinds of stages or steps for your issues or tasks. Here you can edit or add process states. For example, you could create a status for under review. Select a status category. With the current implementation, when tasks move from the unstarted category to the active category, the issue or task status is updated from to do to in progress. The done status or one status is used when an action item is marked as complete or when an issue status is updated to done. In this example, under review would be an active status category. Here you can see that under review has been added to the process states and can be used as a status for issues created within this project. As you can see, Huli is packed with settings to customize your workspace to exactly what you need for your projects, tasks, and issues. As always, thanks for watching this video. We hope you found it useful, but of course, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to leave us a comment or join us in our Slack community. Can't wait to see you there.